All right, I'm cruising the land, and what we're looking at is two 200 series Land Cruisers. I'm going to be doing a comparison video. What? A 200 compared to a 200? Well, we have a 2008, the first year of the 200 series. So let's call it Gen 1, version 1. There was a small facelift in 2012, and then a major facelift in 2016. That's what this is. This is a 2016 right here. So, let's take a quick little pause here. Subscribe. This is all Land Cruisers. If you like Land Cruisers and it's your thing, like it is mine, you're looking to get one or you already have one, you want tips, ideas, that's what my channel is all about. It's Land Cruisers full-time. Now, you're like, oh, I can't. I don't have a Gmail. I can't subscribe. Well, you're right. You need to have a Gmail because YouTube is owned by Google. But check it out. Pause this video. Go get yourself a Gmail account. That's what I've done. And listen to this tip. If you are ever on Craigslist, OfferUp, Car Gurus, or different, you know, face, Facebook Marketplace, and you don't want to give your own private phone number, go get a Gmail, you know, and, and just keep it all Land Cruiser stuff. How, how awesome is that? The last thing we want is more emails to our email box, right? Well, if you have a Gmail, you could keep it all truck stuff, vehicle stuff, Land Cruiser stuff. It'll become your favorite inbox. Make it your name and your area code or, you know, Greg Land Cruiser, uh, you know, 949 at Gmail. Anyhow, you'll thank me later that you did it. And then you go get a Google Voice number. And with the Google Voice, that's the number you use when you're talking to people about, you know, let's meet at the Shell gas station and, you know, I'll buy that thing from you or you buy this from me. So just makes life easy. And that number, the, the Google Voice, ends up being like a text box on your smartphone. So you can keep all parse off all your personal stuff from your truck stuff or whatever your hobby is. Anyways, I digress. Go get yourself a Gmail. Join, you know, subscribe to this on YouTube and any of your other favorite channels. You can hit the bell anytime there's a new video. All right, let's get to it, right? 200 series versus 200 series. And by the way, if you subscribe, I have videos like 200 series versus an 80, a 200 versus an LX570, a 200 versus a 60 series. I go on and on. I've done tons of videos and this is my first 200 versus 200. And I, I scoured YouTube. I haven't seen anybody do it yet. People have done videos like, oh, here's the new facelift model. What's changed? But I'm doing a video where we're going to go side by side, dash by dash, just so you can see the differences. Now, one of the biggest differences between these two is price and miles. Obviously, an older one typically is going to have more miles. There's going to be isolated cases where someone threw a ton of miles on a 2016 or a 2018. So let's get to it. 2008 is the first facelift from the 100 series. So they stuck with a V8, but they went from, um, well, 381 horsepower in this one. And the LX, um, or sorry, well, the LX 470 or the 100 series was 275 horsepower in that final year. So they jumped 100 horsepower, lots more, lots more for towing. And again, I'll put in my description, my 100 versus 200. There's a whole video about that if you're in the market trying to choose between the two. But this one is the beast of all beasts. And under this hood, as we walk around and we'll look at the engines, they're exactly the same engine. 5.7 liter, 5.7 liter. So that did not change from 2008 to 2016. What did change is the transmission. This is a six speed and that's an eight speed. That can help with towing and going up hills, more gears to choose from so the vehicle's not kicking down. And, you know, honestly, an eight-speed is an upgrade. So that's one of the major differences between these two. Now, on the 2008, obviously you could see the front lights, uh, major difference there. The grill, so the front bumper. Of course, the 2016 has an aftermarket ARB. The wheels changed and... Not a big fan of the 2008 wheels. I do have some Rock Warriors that I had on this. If you're familiar with my channel, I had it on this uh, 2008 in front of us. But these wheels, believe it or not, fit because it's the same five by 150 uh, lug nut bolt pattern there. So you can take one of these wheels from a 2016 and throw it on your 2008 through 2015. No problem. 
So, these ones are a little plain Jane, right? Like, meh, meh, not a big deal. And that has like Michelin Defender's great tire for any vehicle, for that matter. This has the good old BF, uh, Goodrich, BFG's KO2's with, you know, that nice little meaty, gives it a little bit more of a, you know, overland, uh, all-terrain look. I, I definitely love these KO2s. I got a video on KO2s versus Wild Peaks also, if you are on my channel and you're trying to, uh, you know, juggle between what tires to put. But this tire going onto that truck definitely gives your 2008 and up an upgrade. It, it, it refreshes it big time. So you can typically find these online eh, for about 800 bucks. If you get it lower than that, count yourself lucky uh, or thousand bucks typically. Depends if there's tires on it or not. And usually the tires are warm. And who knows, this 2008 is for sale. I'll put a link for that too in my description. And uh, these tires could be negotiated to be put onto that truck because I will be putting my Yankee gold, call it copper, dark gold, um, rock warrior wheels onto the 2016. So since we're at the back, the other noticeable difference is the facelift in the back. The lights, uh, both LED, but this one's just like a smoother, cleaner, more modern, like, like less digitized looking LED, more smooth uh, transition in the light compared to this one. Yes, of course, you're all saying, what, is this a Heritage? No, <laughs> the Heritage model got this. So that's uh, what the 2020 and 2021, the last two years of the 200 series. So they put this on the truck. You can buy these for 600 bucks and I have an FJ40. I'm like, what, 600 bucks? Those are like 50 bucks, but they have little knobs on the other side to go into the fender on a 40 series. Get a Dremel, cut them off, put two-sided tape, voila, you can put the nice emblem um, on your 200. I may do it on this one. Not that I'm trying to trick people thinking, oh, is that a heritage, heritage wannabe? No, I just like the look. I think that's so cool. So why not? It's a 200 and guess what? You're allowed. Go to eBay, go to your local Toyota dealership. Don't get the heritage one that's smooth on the back, get the one with the two nibs, cut them off, save yourself 500 bucks and get your badging. All right, so, and I'll, I'll briefly talk about the difference between my 2016 compared to a Heritage. So you can see the back, how the, uh, the trim lines cut below the light, super nice, super smooth. I, I mean, I'm more partial towards the, the facelift um, I think most are, but some people, they, they like this style. On the 2008, um, if you notice, and through 2011, 2012 really was not a model either, by the way. Um, it was just a carryover of the 2011s because they did the facelift, the first facelift in 2013 through 2015. All right, different lights in the back, different lights in the front, and a small dash change. The major change is when it came to this 2016. We'll get in the interiors here quick too. Another difference between these two rigs, neither has the, uh, the OEM roof rack. This has the base rack. So base rack is from ARB. It's their new proprietary uh, dovetailed rack, which you have to buy their mounts to be able to do anything. So if you buy Max Tracks, well, you need their mount to ma mount your Max Tracks. If you buy an awning, if you buy a rooftop tent, you, they have all these accessories at 30 to 60 to $80 each to be able to mount stuff versus this roof rack, which is more of a classic look, clean look. This is rugged bound. If you're interested in this, I do sell them. You can get 5% off with this rack. Part, you know, different from the Prinsu's, you can see the uh, the rails run north to south, uh, north to south, and you do have east to west bars going across. This is the most heavy duty roof rack you can buy for any of your Land Cruisers and make them for all models. I love it. That's why I got one on this truck, and that's why I started um, doing videos on how to install them and started working with the company. They're pretty awesome out of Texas. So. Those are two of the differences. We'll see 
if I'll end up putting it onto, uh, I haven't named this truck yet. It might be United Nations 2 because this one is United Nations. My original United Nations. I don't think I need to explain why. That looks like a United Nations truck. It's just missing the big black UN on the door panel, right? All right, and then your lights, you know, they did a major improvement on the lights um, because they went from this to, you know, LED. This is a sweet light LED down here and sides and it just, it lights up the road much better than United Nations one here. Okay, on the exterior, what other differences? You can see my side mirrors, um, you know, color coded to the truck, is, of course, which is always nice. But on the 2016 and up, and possibly on that first facelift in 2013, I'd have to verify, you got the turn signal right in the light. You have adaptive cruise control upgrade. Uh, well, on all of them, you have. Um, uh, crash detection, you have lane detection, all of that. You do not get that on the older series of the Land Cruisers. All right. But they both have the same, H well, they, the, the whole suspension, exactly the same. The frame, everything's the same. Um, really, the changes is the body, the lights, the back lights, the dash, everything else, three rows, except the Heritage. Uh, one of the years of the heritage. We'll get to that in a second. And then look at the hood. The hood is where they did a really cool change. You see how it's kind of muscular? It's, it's a little tough to see as white, but this is raised. This is like boom, boom. It's just two big raised portions of the hood where here it's a little bit more subtle and less rugged looking. They're still raised further apart, but not as high, not as beefy looking. All right, so the next part is, you know, and I was thinking, let's look at the engines. They're the same. They're exactly the same. Um, and the suspension, exactly the same. Transmission changed. Well, let's get into the interiors. So we'll do a, a, a flyby here. So tan, you, you, you could get tan and you could get black in the 2008 through 2015 pretty much. But as you can see, it's, it's a clean, cool dash. And a lot of people, when they talk about the, um, the Land Cruiser, they say, oh, it's, it's antiquated, it's old, it's not as advanced as you know most cars of the same era. And they're 100% right. There's no car play in either of these. Um, you could add it. There's, there's aftermarket tweaks you can do. But... You know, a Land Cruiser, you're buying it because it's a Land Cruiser, because it lasts, because average owner owns it 10 years for a reason. These aren't leased and thrown back, you know, into the, uh, to the dealership. These are kept. They're so reliable. Always made in Japan, not made in the U.S. This is fully made in Japan. And that 5.7, never compare it to a Tundra 5.7. Not the same. This one is just better, better built. The Tundra, and don't get me wrong, Tundra's awesome. This one is just better built. All right, uh, carpets are different between the two, believe it or not. Um, but if you get, um, I believe if you're getting the WeatherTech, they're the same, because it's the same type of cavity uh, area by the footing, but the carpets did change between the model years. All right, airbags, all the goodies, but let's go take a look at the um, interior. And oh yeah, the roof is gonna be color coded to the seats so wait till you see the 2016 i think the 2016 and up is like one of the major upgrades is the feel is a lot more modernized inside all right let's go check that back seat of course they fold it's uh one third two thirds but let's go look at the other interior while it's fresh in our minds and i'll do it from the back seat of course All right, well, let me go on the other side. I forgot I have some cool gear that's going on this one. And by the way, another reason why you wanna subscribe, I'm going to be doing a build on this one. So even though it's got ARB and sliders and a roof rack, I'm gonna be putting a bigger suspension on it. This has an entry level two inch old man emu on it. Uh, I'm gonna be going higher and my bigger tires, my 33s, 
from uh, that's on my rock warriors gonna be doing kind of that bronze dark gold color uh, scheme on this eliminate the chrome so and changing that rear bumper who needs two jerry can holders <laughs> kind of so either i'm going to customize this or talking with the boys over at slee maybe i'll do a slee rear bumper on this bad boy but this is going to change a lot so i'll have before and after and uh looking forward to this build on this truck and the suspension is going to be the best suspension you can put on a 200 series so stay tuned for that so first of all, look at this leather. This is the Terra leather, and I love it. So you can either get black or this Terra. And the headliner is dark, which I love that, right? Nice dark headliner. Maybe I should put some aftermarket stars up there, you know, the LED lighting. I kid, I'd rather spend that money on some uh, lights, Baja design lights, which that's another upgrade I'll be doing on this truck. All right, so look at that interior there. You can see that it's much more upgraded, uh, you know, with the sign of the times, everything great there. But again, the, the trans, well, the four by four is the same between the two. So you're not getting any more off-road capabilities with a 2016 over 2008. It's doing the same stuff, right? It's just phenomenal. All right. You know, the wood trim is nice. The steering wheel on both of them is super nice. Just this one, again, a little bit more updated. They both have the same big center console with the cool box. So the bummer there is it eats up so much space. Yes, it's gonna keep your drinks cold. Um, that's just a piece that's on top. We can remove that. Oh, hang on, we open up. Yeah, so you have this little spot to maybe put a phone and a checkbook. I, I don't know, it's so old school. Probably a checkbook is what they were thinking. <laughs> um, 2016, did Venmo exist? And then there's your cool box. Um, so this comes up and you could put a couple waters, Coca-Colas, does stay cold, pretty cool. But look at all that real estate from here and back, it's just absorbed. I'm sure you've watched other 200 series videos and people go on and on about that. You know, honestly, use it for storage. Just never turn on your cool box if you're not going to use it. And if you want it for drinks, you can keep them cool. They did away with that in the, uh, the Heritage. Just like they did away with the rear seats. In 2016, you got the, inf the, the uh, infotainment system on these you know so it came with it i don't mind but that was like two grand and as others have alluded you could just go get two ipad pros for your kids and not have it affixed permanently to the seat but hey it came with it and then 2017 they started making it an option because too many people complained both have the third row seats that fold up to the side unless of course you're getting a heritage so imagine the heritage is not giving you the seats so the price went up, you know, or if it stayed the same or went up year over year from 2019 to 2020, they minus that, they minus the cool box. So if you think about it, they saved money. <laughs> they definitely saved money. And that, I, I call it the, um, on the heritage, the, the moose roof rack, right? Because it looks like antlers. I am not a fan of that Yakima, 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 however you want to pronounce it. I'm not gonna take the time to figure it out because I'm not a fan of that roof rack. I would way prefer the look of that rugged bound. That's a roof rack and that's functional. You can't put a rooftop tent on a Yakima. This can handle three 200 pound dudes standing on it without even flexing. It's got four feet, it's got the crossbars going east and west, it's got the other bars on top uh, going north and south. It's just fully welded that's not build it in your driveway like a prince or front runner this is this is it that is the best roof rack that's why i work with them okay and back seats which i did have some of my gear that's going to be going on this rig so excuse that i'm going to be putting some delta stuff i've got the roll packs that i had on otis my 80 series moon glow pearl going to do the same thing on that rear bumper but look at those seats Look at that headliner, just clean, right? Compared to, again, 
because by now you already forgot what the 2008 looked like on that second row let's check it I don't think I showed the second row you know that tan kind of plain Jane meh, interior and uh, the headliner obviously the Terra with that black headliner looks a lot richer but and we'll look at the backs now but one of the main things to really think about it is the price you know a lot of people when these came out you know spending it was high 60s low 70s and by the end of the model year it was 89 90,000 dealer markups because they only had so many left last of the v8s remember last of the v8s but it's the exact same 5.7 in each of these uh, trucks but the price right these you can get for the high 20s low 30s um, you know with a little bit of miles on them but don't be scared of those miles you see a truck with 200,000 miles it's a land cruiser that engine is built to go 500,000 miles before its first major overhaul like an 80 series built to last 25 years without any major mechanical failure and then due for its first major engine overhaul they still have that same mo but if you look at german trucks even american trucks they're designed to fail after seven eight years and have you go to the dealership and change this and change that or preferably get a new model trade it in that's what they want toyota that's not what their their mo was on the land cruiser and most of their models it's built to last built to last these will be around well past you and i are around my friend so as long as it's maintained properly so low, let's just say low 30s well this is low 60s at best depending which year obviously 2016 2017 is going to be a little better but for me this truck costs twice as much as this and i, I wrestled with that because i said my god i love my 2008 but you know i got a youtube channel i need some content <laughs> and i also have always liked the look of the uh 2016 and i said to myself after i saw the 2024 coming out with the four banger hybrid i'm like you know what they're gonna sell twenty thousand a year of those these they sold like one tenth of that like 2500 a year on average of the uh, 200 series so i better get them while the prices are reasonable and uh these are built to last definitely i'd hate to see a 2024 after 10 years like oh yeah you need a new battery pack how much that's going to be so these are the the big boys and you know that that 2024 is going to be smaller in the cabin and you know just a four banger i, I don't know maybe i'll change my mind as time goes but right now i'm all about the 200 series but again if budget is something you know you realize you could have this and a 60 series for the price of that you can have this and an 80 series for the price of that. And if it's one thing I've learned and I was sharing with someone who's possibly looking at buying this one, I said, you know, the spice of life is variety. And if you're driving this truck, as amazing as it is, if this is your daily, that's all you ever drive, human nature, after a year or two, you need to start getting bored of it. Uh, and you start looking and, you know, well, maybe I'll change car, maybe I'll upgrade because we like to have change in our life. Well, if you have this and an 80, I guarantee you, you drive one, you drive the other, you go back and forth, you will love both and you will not sell either because you'll have the best of both worlds, different experiences, you'll keep them, you don't get bored. That's the trick. Don't have the same, there was a movie, <laughs> those who can remember this reference, like night after night of the same, <laughs> so you get it. Um, variety is the spice of life. All right, let's look at the back. And the back is gonna be pretty cool because you'll see on this one, it has a nice upgrade that you can do on any of your 200 series. And it is not those Zargus cases, which I do have those. Anybody who's interested, these go for about 400 bucks, 450, you know, tax shipped. I sell these for 260, one time use by the US military. And I got a bunch of them. So just like the roof rack on this rig up top, this is the rugged bound drawer system. It is phenomenal, squeak free. I'm not gonna name some of the brands, but most of the brands, they rattle and squeak and make noise, not fun, drive you nuts. This is ball bearing, super quiet. Obviously aluminum and it is 
built for a 200 series. A lot of the other companies make a small, medium, large with a fit kit on the sides, so it doesn't really reach to the back of the seat. Look at this. That is made for a 200 series. And when you put your seats down, it makes a nice platform. Let's do that real quick. All right. Makes a nice sleeping platform. Um, just put your mattress down or whatever you want and voila. You don't have to have a rooftop tent necessarily. You can sleep in the back. So, great design. And if you want one for your 80 series, this one won't fit. It's not built for all Land Cruisers. There's an 80 series one. There's a 100 series one, just like the roof racks. So that is what we got in the back of United Nations version one, the 2008. And of course you have the, uh, the storage here. So if you guys know on the 80 series, a lot of people, they get storage, right? Um, you know, they cut and they can put some cool storage, which by the way, Rugged Bound has that too, if you're interested. And I have 5% off anything, 5% off these. Uh, and if you're in SoCal, I'll help you with the install, 5% off the roof rack uh, and so on. So split tailgate, that's another thing that they dropped in 2024 on that four banger. Why? Because it's cheaper to make one big massive lift gate. This is more expensive to make the split tailgate, which to me is a staple of the Land Cruiser. They always had them. Even my 40 series has a, a drop tailgate like that. 60 series, the Iron Pig, all of them. So where are you going to sit your kids when you're at the ski mountain taking their boots off? Where are you going to, you're no longer the center of attention when you're on the trail with your buddies, um, you know, in their Jeeps and what have you, because you can, th this is like the get together area. This is where you're putting out your lunch and the chips and drinks. And this is the meeting area. It's awesome. You put overhead lighting, nighttime, you're all set up. Toyota, why did you drop that feature? Anyways, you can still get it on a 200. So let's check the back of the 2016. That drawer system, if whoever buys the uh, that 200, so the ARB with their shock opening by itself, pretty cool. This one, there we go. Oh yeah, that's why my shock is missing on this one. I'll have to replace that. By the way, I just got that. That's why you don't see the plate on it. That's one thing I need to address. And again, I want to either put a uh, rear tire carrier and retrofit this, kind of customize, do some welding of some other parts. That's why you saw the Delta inside the rig. Um, or just switch it out for a, uh, a sleeve. So this one has a built, not bot, bot drawer system. What's interesting, it was built so that these could be retained and not taken out and put back in because that other drawer system from Rugged Bound, it does require removing the, uh, the rear seats. So this drawer system, pretty awesome um, for building it all wood and it can be removed when you want to put those seats down. So Whoever's buying that, maybe you can switch for these for uh, a bit of a credit and uh, not take that rugged bound. And then I'll put the rugged bound in here. So again, that interior, just that dark, rich, just it's got that nice, clean, rich feel with that dark uh, headliner. It's not, it, it's a nice material. It's not, it's not the a la Cant or Cantera, um, but still, it's nice. I like it. I do see on 2017 and up, they did put the electric button here to close the top hatch. Not on the 2016, on this one at least. So I do have to do my research there on why. But you still have the rear storage for your tools uh, that come, you know, from Toyota. Voila. So again, part of my build is going to be the drawer system on the back of this one. Now, since we're looking at the 2016, let's really go quickly over the changes with the Heritage. So the Heritage got the Yakima roof rack, which I am not a fan. I'd rather not have that and get the rugged bound or maybe even this base rack. But if you're going to put a rooftop tent, I don't know, the base rack, problematic, the rugged bound, way stronger uh, and secure. The 
heritage, they dropped this. So this was pretty much um, the 2013 and up. And then in 2020 and 2021, they dropped it. So if you look at it, it's interesting. The 2008 doesn't have it. Um, and that's exactly the same thing with the heritage. They dropped that. So yeah, maybe it saves money and it's a nice, clean, streamlined look. And the heritage also did not have running boards. More money saved to maximize their profit on those final years, right? And no rear seats. So. If this was a heritage, it would have that badging, which I'm still gonna do for 50 bucks. Uh, it would have the gold like TRD style wheels, or not TRD style, it is TRD. Uh, this is ARB um, sliders. I gotta make that black, and I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do with that, not a big fan. So the heritage did not have that, did not have the cool box, and the heritage had in their headlights uh, which I do dig, it's pretty cool. So this one is all chromed out. Well, the Heritage, they blacked out the inside cavity of the headlight, but all the function of the headlight was the same. And on the Heritage, kind of hard to see, especially when you're putting these big beefy bars on it. They did away with the three lines, levels in the grill, like the three thicker lines, and it has two that goes here to your emblem. And this is a functioning emblem. This is probably the most expensive emblem you can buy because there's a computer in that. That's where you have your um, camera up there too. This is where you have your adaptive um, cruise control and what have you. It's all in there versus this one and the older Land Cruiser, which yeah, I blacked out that grill. Plasti dip, you can peel it off. There's it's just plastic. There's no computer in there whatsoever. All right. And rear view camera on this one, no other cameras. This has cameras all around. So even when you go into low and you're rock crawling, cameras come up. Not huge resolution, but hey, it's better than nothing. So you can see side, because the, the mirrors have cameras, the rear has camera, the front has camera. So again, some major upgrades. You just have to ask yourself, is it worth double the price? And if you're talking heritage, triple the price right so 30 grand give or take 60 grand give or take depends on miles and in the heritage you're at you know 90 grand plus i've seen them go for 110 with super low miles um you know premium over what they were because they don't make them no more all right let's close this up shall we go for a short drive maybe right Let's do that. So you can just see how the interior lights up. And if you have any questions, definitely hit me up. I answer everybody's questions. We're gonna have a bit of sun here. It's early morning in Southern California. But there you go, there's, there we go. Give you an idea of the dash. So it's that kind of teal blue look. Pretty cool, it's clean, I like it. You know, the LX570, I had one from 2008 till just this past fall, and I sold it. Um, a little more elegant inside, kind of cool inside, but since I drove that for so long when I got this Land Cruiser, I was like, I just, it felt refreshed. It felt new and different, um, and I like it. Again, I have a video comparing a this truck to to my LX570 which was in the Arctic silver color um, and ultimately I felt the KDSS is probably yeah let me put my seatbelt on hang on a sec there we go oh and as we do a drive-by of my house let's admire a couple 80 series so that's a 94 I will have that coming up for sale soon on 34 inch tires, two inch Dobinson lift. And there is a low mile, 112,000 miles red pearl 80 series. You can see the rugged bound roof rack on it on 33s, also with a two inch lift, but it's the old man emu if I can zoom in. There she is. Both awesome rigs. Like I said, you could get one of those and the 200 series I'm driving in for the same price as a 2016 Land Cruiser. 
So there's that to consider. All right, I'm gonna go uphill here. But the you know the six speed, believe it or not, this this 200 is faster than the 2016 by like I don't know almost half a second because just the gears there's six gears to rip through when you're you hammer the pedal down versus um, eight gears to go through. So it is interestingly enough slightly faster with the same engine because of the gears. But eight gears, obviously you're gonna have a lot more smoothness, right? All right, here we go. I just was holding the camera like that because I uh, didn't want to get the sunshine directly into the lens. My tire light's on because I have the, the tire pressure monitoring system, but I had my Rock Warriors on this rig and I finally put the originals back on and there might be something I have to do to reconnect them or maybe one of them has uh, gone out. So something I'll have to address. You know, in the, in the center... Uh, console screen not the biggest and it got slightly bigger barely by an inch maybe I think this is a seven inch and I think it's a nine inch in the 2016 so still small by modern vehicle standards but everything is there that you need all buttons a lot of tactile so I still like all that um, this one you can get to your climate control pretty quick the big complaint on the newer ones is you have to get into your screen to change uh, well, maybe it's the same thing here. So climate, yeah, you got to get into your screen to touch your, for your fan speed. There's there's no other spot to touch it. So on both of them, that's the case. Oh well, no big deal. You just gotta figure out your buttons, right? And you know, ample power. If you compare this to the the 100 series think about it an extra 100 horsepower dodge trucks I'm not comparing a toyota to a dodge by any means but i just want to point something out they have their v8 and then they have their hemi right they brag about their hemi the hemi is 395 horsepower in the dodge ram this is 381 pretty much the same pretty much equal on torque as well toyota did never came out and said Yes, our Land Cruiser Hemi are super powerful. No, it's just a Land Cruiser, and that's the engine that came in all of them. No bragging needed. So that is uh, a big difference uh, with Toyota. This is a powerful engine, just like a Hemi. Oh, look at that. The ARB bar in the front is thick. I love it. Which, you know, the ARB makes a bar for this truck as well all right let me get this parked here a little closer maybe I'll do my thumbnail picture right now real quick and by the way if you haven't hit that subscribe button what are you waiting for go get your gmail account you'll thank me later and subscribe because you'll see the, the build series I will put out on that 2016 all right Let me get my thumbnail picture here and then we'll jump into the 2016 and take that one for a quick spin. All right, so a close up because I was just talking how thick this bar is. So I've got bars on lots of my Land Cruisers. No bar as thick as this. I can't get my fingers around it. I've got a, you know, average hand and I cannot even wrap around that. So that's what, two and a half inch? three inch possibly I'll have to see one of the upgrades I'm gonna do on this is the it's called the front rail so it goes from here to there I think it's awesome it's just as thick as that so it's just you know oversized right the 200 series just an oversized beast I'm gonna change the um, the fair lead and uh, my front um, hook on this and I'm thinking Baja lights up top LP6s, LP9s, some squadrons down here uh, for the fog light. So stay tuned. We're going to be doing some cool stuff to this rig. Some of you might have noticed something on this truck, which I usually have on all of them. Um, action tracks. So this is a rare color I call albino. It's just when they switch the color in the, um, in the injection mold, 
this just has no pigment to it and i love it because it's white and goes with the truck but i also represent uh, action tracks have them for great deals i always put the yellow zinc metal so not silver zinc yellow zinc costs twice as much but i bought so much at the beginning of covid like <laughs> eight grand worth of metal believe it or not because i got such a killer price so i pass that savings on to um you know my subscribers my followers that want to buy action tracks boards so i have these for uh what 15 percent off retail with upgraded metal um and if you're in southern california free because we meet up or if you're somewhere in the country just uh you know whatever the ups cost is to ship them all right back into the 2016 And again, you know, the sunroof, all the other functions, exactly the same, all have the push start. There we go. This one sat for a while, so the battery was a little low. Stereo systems are awesome in these, so um, both of them crank the music. I, I don't know what difference there is. I'm uh, a little older now, so I don't blare my music like I did when I was mid-20s so uh, just a nice clean crisp stereo system is all I care about so you could see the dash a little bit modernized here super clean yes 87,000 miles and the other one was 210 approximately um, you know so maybe some more functions both of them had the little information uh, section here and uh, just this one, a little bit updated, clean, but the same functions, right? All the same readings. The screen, like I said, slightly larger. Um, and then all your functions down here. So the, you know, changing your powers for the gears, you know, what, what RPMs they change. So your power button, your second gear start, um, squiggly road, as my daughter calls it and then locking your center diff, which will automatically lock simple dial to put it into four wheel low. And then this turn, which the other one doesn't have, it's pretty cool. If you're doing a tight turn on the trail, it locks your inner rear wheel. So it, it just skids to help make you make a slightly better turn. Both have heated seats, but um, does this one have cooled? Yes. So we got heat and we got cool on the seats. You can see that's the cool because it's just a fan that goes through the perforated leather here. Um, and then heat and then heated steering wheel. So this has heat, heating steering wheel, wheel and cooled seats that the 2008 does not. All right. Funny thing about heating steering wheels. I'm like, just put your fan on hot and your hand is here. Anyways, it is a nice creature comfort um, to have a heated steering wheel. I must admit but for 30 grand more I don't know I could have cold fingers for the first few miles as the truck is warming up so let's just cruise around in this one so do I notice a difference do I notice that it's half a second slower and let me put my seatbelt on okay no dinging but you could see see that hood line see how beefy that is so I, I don't know if you get the feel that I have but you know this is lifted two inches feels like I'm super high great point of view on the road just that alone makes it safer in my opinion because uh, you have more field of vision but I just love that hood look at that hood that's just you know you're in a monster you're in a, you're in a beast all right so let's go same route trying to keep my camera away from that sun the steering wheel's thick, feels great. Feels great on both cars. The steering wheel has that nice, luxurious feel. Both have the wood up top. Um, this one is more like a coating on it, I would have to say. The other one's flat look. So I just say the 2016, the wood feels a little bit more quality on the steering wheel. Kind of like the, uh, the LX470. Oh my God, that wood steering wheel, just phenomenal. And the process they do on that LX470, so many coats of um, clear on it, like tons, it's just phenomenal. This one, it's okay. I gotta admit, the LX470 steering wheel was, was nicer when it came to the wood. All your features, you know, at your fingertips as well. 
in that dash just uh, everything feels rich everything feels clean and when you do the Terra or the black the dash is going to be the same dark color uh, inside versus the 2008 God I, yeah it wasn't it wasn't black was it it was uh, like a dark brown both with the oh shit handles crab handles on the side and both with that wood trim piece so again if you can get over the slight well slight the, the the upgrade they did on a 2016 I got to tell you and I wrestled and I wrestled um, you know I'm gonna sell that truck right about 30 grand depending what the person takes equipment wise and these 2016s are 60 grand you know unless you get a super high miles and you know they're starting to have some that someone put a ton of miles on maybe 130 140 thousand miles you can start to get a slightly better deal and 2015s obviously you get a better deal because it's not this it doesn't have all the upgrades that a 2016 has so oh one more Easter egg look of these Both of these have a two inch lift and for some reason that 80 series looks taller. Maybe if I bring my camera, yeah, we're level. It looks taller when I go like that. And that's my other point. You can get a clean, really nice, cause this one is 29.9 as is, like stock, well, got the lift, got the 34 inch tires. This one, because it's got low miles, is a little higher, it's mid thirties. But you could get either one of those and that 200 series up there for pretty much the same price as a 2016. Two cars for the price of one? You just have to say, all right, it's a 2008, it's a 2009. Big deal, big deal. And I get that the lights on the front are quite different, but I'll tell you what, once you're slapping an ARB front bumper on it, they start to look the same, wouldn't they? I'd say yes. So there's my 2008 up at the cul-de-sac at the top of the road put an ARB on the front of that you're you're looking at the ARB because it eliminates the lower bumper and uh, just make sure you're getting the ARB for 2008 because the, the the front bumpers are different and they are different bars um, for fitment wise but as far as the thickness of that bar sitting up front there it's going to be just as thick on the 2008 so that's an upgrade I would do and front bars are way less expensive than rear bars when it comes to uh, any vehicle. Rear bars, I guess there's a lot more work into it. Hinges, uh, the, the spindle and all, um, just cost more, like triple the cost of a front bar, or at least double. All right, so hopefully that helps you with your search for your Land Cruiser and gives you some insight price-wise and quality wise what you want to do like some people will be hell-bent on getting a heritage to say i got the last of the ultimate uh 200 series well i'll tell you this save yourself 30 grand and get a 2016 or a 2017 yeah i'll have to deal with this i might black black it out do a black satin or i might do the yellow uh the yankee gold that i'm doing on the wheels that's arb i'm going to actually powder coat that it's going to be part of the build and uh, as you see here, it's got the old man emu. I want to change that out. Stay tuned to see which suspension I go with. I'll just tell you right now, it is the ultimate and it will have um, the reservoir um, in the shock. And it's gonna be higher. This is going up and the tires are gonna be bigger. So this thing will get taller, meaner. And I also do something the wheels that are going on. I'm not a big fan of that tucked in look here. See the wheels tucked in? I like it where it's flush or slightly out, like quarter inch beyond the, the fender. So stay tuned for that, subscribe. What are you waiting for? If you like Land Cruisers, if you're shopping, but it might not be your year, you're, you're shopping as time goes, this will always be relevant. All my Land Cruiser videos will be relevant and there'll always be more videos to come. All right, that should be my picture, right? I didn't do the thumbnail yet. I think that'll be it. And, you know, I'll have a video on Switch Pros versus the um, 
uh, S-Pod, and I believe I'll be putting an S-Pod in this because that's who Baja Designs works with, and I'm going to do my whole package with Baja Designs, and I'll have a link for them. Um, so look at my link tree. If you ever have these so tall like this and it won't fit in your garage with all your gear, I sell car covers for these. 140 bucks shipped, gray or black. Um, so there's all those type of reasons and, you know, air compressors, just tips, ideas, things that you can do to your Land Cruiser. And usually from the companies that uh, I do a video on, I ask them to give a discount to my followers. So subscribing to my channel has its benefits. Um, so go ahead and do that since you got to the end of this and any comments, like, subscribe, definitely like it if this helped you. Man, for some of you, I might have saved you 30 grand or got you to buy two Land Cruisers instead of one. And if you get an 80 series, believe me, I have a plethora of videos on things you can do to upgrade, to maintain, to just tricks and ideas and things you can do with your cruiser. If you're like me, I can watch Land Cruiser content all day long. All right, so that's it. Happy trails. Thanks for, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing if you did. And if you didn't subscribe, what's wrong with you? Subscribe, would you? And uh, let's, let's enjoy our Land Cruisers, the ultimate 4x4 vehicle known to mankind. Sorry, Land, Land Rover guys, but, you know, hashtag facts. All right, thanks for tuning in. Have yourself a great day and happy trails.